Hey guys, this is Doug from fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. Going to do a video today about uh, the role of women in the church and in the body, in leadership. Let's pray first. Thank you, Lord. Please be fully in charge in every way. We ask that you'd cover this in the blood of Jesus. Lord, if it's not too much to ask, Anybody that's not supposed to hear this, if you could just have them click away right now or yell something in their ear because they can't handle it and it's too much meat for them and whatever. Just have your way, Lord. Let truth be spoken to those that have ears to hear. We love you and we praise your holy name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, I got to tell you, I've been trying to put this one off and uh, I knew that sooner or later he was going to have me do a video on this and uh, mm, boy I, I don't know how much heat this is going to bring but uh, here we go uh, in my efforts to understand what the Bible says I went back to the Lord over and over and said okay this is what man says um, but what do you say and he explained to me about what the church is, that it's the city church, and about uh, the baptism of fire that nobody preaches about hardly anymore, and, and holiness, and that he does expect you to obey, not just say a little prayer, and then think you're going to be safe, and you can do whatever you want from then on. And uh, I know the camera, I'm off to one side, but we're going to do some visual aids here in a minute, so just hang with me. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> one of the things is that people started coming to me and saying, uh, God would never call a woman to be a prophet or an apostle or a pastor. I grew up in the Southern Baptist, uh, you know, cult, uh, sect, faction, whatever you want to call it. And uh, they really, really strongly feel that women should not be in leadership positions. So I went to the Lord and asked him to explain it to me. And he explained it to me. And here's my take on it. As with most of the things that I talk about, I think that if we are mature in Christ, we should see the things of the Spirit, not the things of the flesh. We should not have carnal eyes, we should have spiritual eyes. That when we graduate off the milk and get to the meat, we graduate from the physical into the spiritual and we see in the, see in the, in the spiritual realms what the Lord sees and we don't focus on this dirty, nasty mud ball of a planet where everything is flesh and dirty and whatever. Lord, please take me home. So, anyway, here's the short of it. Do I believe that women should be pastors? No, absolutely not. Do I believe that women should be could be called by God to be apostles or prophets, evangelists? Absolutely not. Absolutely, positively, no way, no how, does the Lord want a woman standing up in front telling people what to do, telling people what God has to say? Absolutely, positively, no way, no how. Now, here's the problem. Um, I'm defining women completely different than the church, the institutional, whatever, your weekend, women's conference, men's conference, your whatever. Okay? So, um, before you get all riled up and whatever, um, let me explain to you what a woman is. You need to understand, and this is how the Lord explained it to me, so this is how I'm going to explain it to you, because it made sense to me, and I'm hoping that maybe he'll he'll back it up and explain it to you, but you take it for whatever. This is just a parable. This is just some, some, some imagery to help you get your head around something which is inherently above your head, and, and we're just doing the best we can as grasshoppers before God to get our head around it, okay? This is how this works, okay? Here's the cup model that we talk about all the time. In your cup, there's you and there's Jesus and there's sin until you get enough Jesus that he pushes the sin out but then he's going to crucify the you and get less and less of you until he pretty much takes over and you're just a fleck in a big ocean of Jesus that's the idea okay now what you need to understand is that the you is Jezebel driven the you is Antichrist the you is 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 Eve in the garden saying well God doesn't really mean that well, he's not really like that. Well, we could be gods, okay? Now, the sin whispers that kind of stuff, but it's you that are the Jezebel that receive it and listen to it and obey it, okay? Now, the Jesus in you, he's masculine. He's your husband. You know, you're the bride. He's the husband. 
he's the one wearing the pants okay now <clears throat> I could not have got here I could never have have got to where I am without the mighty mighty women that God sent um, to mentor, to pray, to encourage, to support in one way or another, to, to rebuke me, whatever. And I understand that Jesus is my husband, okay? That I need to be a Proverbs 31 woman spiritually to Jesus. Read Proverbs 31 about the traits of a good woman, all of that. Men, your wife will not be a Proverbs 31 woman to you if you're not being a Proverbs 31 woman to Jesus. And you shouldn't expect her to be. She will only submit as well as you submit to Jesus. Jesus submitted to the Father. We submit to Jesus. They submit to us. That's the supposed to be the order of things. Now, if we refuse to do it, God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. God will use the weak, broken vessels. And here's, here's this is how it works with me, okay? It's real simple. If my wife looks me in the eye and opens her mouth and rebukes me, and it's Jesus it's blue stuff, it's the Holy Spirit speaking through her, then I bow my head and say, yes, Lord, and I do whatever she told me to do. Because that wasn't my wife. I'm not submitting to that, that female, that person, that, that, that yellow stuff. I'm submitting to Jesus, and he's wearing the pants. He's the head of my house, and if he speaks, then I'm going to obey. Okay? Now, if her, if her red stuff speaks and comes out of her, I'm going to rebuke it in the name of Jesus and ask the Lord to get her free and fill her cup so that's not in there anymore. If her yellow stuff speaks, then I'm going to let her know that I hate her yellow stuff. I didn't marry her for her yellow stuff. I married her for the Jesus in her, and the Jesus in her darn well better come out and start talking because I don't care what her yellow stuff says. Okay? Now, if I speak to my wife and it's Jesus coming out, then she should say, yes, Lord, bow her head and do whatever Jesus just said to do. If my yellow stuff is speaking to her, I don't expect her to obey that at all. She needs to ask her husband what to do, and if her husband says, yeah, go along with his stupid yellow stuff because we don't want to fight here, then she will. She's not submitting to me. She submit to the Jesus in her. He's the one wearing the pants. He's the one she's listening to, and he's the one she needs to obey. Now, if my red stuff speaks to my wife, I expect her to try and get me free. And get it out of me and rebuke me to my face and tell me it's wrong. I want her to obey her husband, Jesus. I don't want her to obey my yellow stuff, ever. I want her to pray against it and ask the Lord to kill it and get it out. Now, he may, at times, tell her to go ahead and go along with me. And that's really scary to me because I don't want her to. I want to make sure that Jesus is coming out of my mouth, that I am being masculine. Because the yellow stuff in me is feminine and Jezebel and Antichrist. Okay? So, here's what you need to understand. In any room, the elder is who has whoever has the biggest, most filled up cup of Jesus, most cleaned out cup of Jesus with the least yellow stuff in it. That's the elder. Okay? Now, if some guy gets up on stage, some guy gets up on stage and yellow stuff starts spouting out of his mouth and he's talking about himself and his kids and it's all pride and it's all self and it's all whatever then he needs to sit down and shut up and cover his head and ask his husband when he gets home what went wrong because those who are speaking Jesus those who are prophesying those who are given an interpretation of tongues those who have a song or a hymn that the Lord gave them that's Jesus that's my husband I want to hear from him women you need to understand that your yellow stuff is no better or no worse than my yellow stuff or any other guy's yellow stuff. We've got a fundamental problem in the church where we say that God is no respecter of persons, that he judges the spirit, that he knows the hearts and minds of men, that, he, that we are to be spiritual and not carnal, and then we say God is intensely interested in what you have between your legs. That God is obsessively focused on the sack of skin that you're in. And whether or not, by gender, you are a male or female. Because that's going to determine your usefulness to the kingdom. That cannot be. Hear me, that cannot be. Anytime, in the spirit, I've been praying, and I'm before the throne of God repenting, and, and one of my sisters is there with me praying. She's not a girl. She's just a warrior. 